some of these foreign workers have had a rude awakening. It's just after one in the morning, and we've come onto this construction site. Officials have surrounded the premise to make sure nobody... Criminals have always had a negative connotation even long after the punishment of their crimes. This permanent stigma haunts them in their work and personal lives even if it was just a minor offence. We can all say we're never going to commit a crime, but if you are living in the shoes of poverty and desperation, can you still say the same? Kuala Lumpur, a developing country that is home to many crime cases with majority of it being property crime. 101,017 pickpocket cases were recorded in Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman itself in 2017 and for the first half of 2018, almost 500 cases were recorded. This is crucial data as Malaysia heavily depends on tourism to fund its economy. Having a tainted image of a crime-infested city like Amsterdam could potentially affect a tourist decision to choose other Asian countries over Malaysia. But don't take my word for it, let's look at the stats. This is the graph of visitors from the 80s to 2019, and this is the number of crime cases from 1980 to 2017. The correlation seems to be that as the number of crime cases decreases, the number of visitors increases. This is very present in Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman as many reviews on TripAdvisor casually warn visitors about the number of pickpocket and snatch thieves as well as lack of attractions in the area. So you might be thinking, let's just lock all of them up and problem solved. The issue with that is minor crimes like pickpocketing have very minimal jail sentences. After completing their sentence, nobody wishes to hire them due to their past records. So what can they do but return back to crime or potentially hitting up more serious crimes like robbery and drug trafficking? This is where Crime Relay steps in. The hype around criminals and crime shows are at unprecedented levels, especially during the quarantine. With shows like Money Heist garnering over 44 million views on Netflix, this goes to show that the market has an appetite for gritty entertainment like these. Crime Relay aims to capitalize on this untapped opportunity under a new form of tourism known as dark tourism. So what is Crime Relay? Crime Relay is a legal black market run by ex-convicts under the concept of misdirection of perceptions. Inspired by how pickpockets use misdirection to perform, Crime Relay uses design to unconsciously cause a shift of mindset in visitors. The reason behind that is to help society accept ex-convicts as people of value and not just see them as monsters. Besides being an entertainment and shopping hub for international and local tourists, ex-convicts that work here have the benefits of learning how to run a business, stage performance as well as earning the respect of the public. So Crime Relay will be replacing the existing Odeon Walk and Odeon Cinema in Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman. Odeon Walk used to be known as Odeon Cinema which operated as a movie theatre until September of 2015. Odeon Walk's existing identity is complementary to Crime Relay as it is a marketplace for sporting goods while Crime Relay is to be a performative market. Although Odeon Cinema is not functioning as a cinema anymore, the fact that Crime Relay's design concept is inspired by films and video games definitely makes it a compatible site. After obtaining the layout of the building, the existing plan was cut up into different segments and that's how the zoning and circulation were developed for the program. However, Crime Relay can be predominantly divided into three acts. Act 1, the humanizing process. Act 2, the neutralizing process. And Act 3, the dehumanizing process. The humanizing process is designed to break the image of ex-criminals through placing them behind the kitchen or the counter, in hopes that people will find that these friendly staff are equally as human as themselves. As you approach the entrance, you will notice that it resembles a movie theater counter. Posters are up on the walls but there is no door to enter. Inspired by speakeasy bars, clues are shown with concrete humans that seem to be walking through walls. So push through the central poster and you will reveal the entrance into Crime Brulee. Right next to the entrance will be a bakery called Bake. Taking inspiration from supermarkets, the aroma of fresh bread will make people hungry and hungry people will buy more food. Fun fact, the name Big can also mean getting high on marijuana. So on the same floor you will find the food district known as Exodibles. This name is derived from the words exotic and edibles. The theme of food served here is exotic meals that depend on what's available which could potentially be borderline illegal. The sources for these ingredients will be explained later on in the video. The dining situation is similar to an actual prison hall as it is open and has a canteen concept to it. 
the cells designed in the black market take inspiration from modular prison cells that are stacked on top of each other to form a triple volume space. The design is also derived from Crime Boulet's signature structure known as the trailer. The trailer is a brief inquiry into how rehabilitation of ex-criminals is addressed using the motion of breaking through an underground society to a better place above. Inspired by movie theatre walkways, it exhibits weekly promotional items as well as the featured pickpocket artists. It is also the entrance into level 1 of the black market. The centre of the trailer is a manual elevator that is only functioning if visitors can solve the puzzle of a two-man mechanism. This encourages users to interact with one another even with the staff. The bottom half of the trailer is called the cells, where it inspires the modular structures found in the stalls in the black market. The top half is known as the eyes, inspired by how prisoners are constantly being watched by security 24-7. Remember this design as it is a crucial design element throughout the space. There are exposed cables with some having light passed through them. It's inspired by how blood travels through veins. If you notice that these elements resemble parts of the human anatomy. This concept is translated throughout the space as not only we want to humanize the criminals, we believe that the building should embody the philosophy as well. After solving the trailer, you end up at a cafe known as the Hangout Cafe. The story that the Hangout Cafe wants to portray is darker than it looks. It depicts the many cases of suicide in prisons by ways of hanging oneself. Its elevated furniture and cozy environment represents being in a higher place or heaven. Navigating through individual stalls of the black market may seem straightforward from below. However, as you start moving through the spaces, you start to realize that it is designed seemingly like a maze. However, your movements are deliberately planned to ensure that no stalls are actually missed out on. This concept is derived from casinos as they design it in a rather confusing layout in order to pull you in to make one last bet before you can find the exit. Things you can buy here are items previously owned by criminals like jewellery, tech pieces and even vehicles. The sources will be explained further into the video. As you reach the peak of the black market, you'll find yourself at the graffiteria. A graffiti cafeteria. This is a safe space to completely cover any surface you see with graffiti as it will eventually become an art exhibit for people to consume art and culture. As you peek over the edge of graffiteria, you will discover an easter egg of Crime Boulet, the secret e-store that sells items at a discounted price. This is only one of the many secrets scattered around the space. The neutralizing process is meant to encourage interaction between ex-prisoners and visitors. After exploring the black market, you can make your way to the back of the space where you discover the fake cinema. The fake cinema uses deep fake technology to, in real time, swap visitors' faces onto the documentary of our staff's crime journey. These structures may look familiar because it is an alternate design of the eyes. These guys having built-in projectors, speakers, and lighting effects to build a tangible ambience for the user. The fake cinema's intentions of doing so is to literally put people in these criminals' shoes and empathize with the hardships that led them into the life of crime. Now let's take the experience outside. The alleyway between two buildings is converted into a program where visitors and staff are able to experience simultaneously. This space is known as the yard. The yard is a picking zone, meaning everyone is free to pickpocket whilst under constant surveillance. The footage recorded through miniature forms of the eyes will be replayed like a live reality TV show at the end of the day. You can also watch lockdown take place, just remember to watch your own pockets. Just like prison, there won't be many clocks around for you to tell time. Yeah. To help maintain a sense of time, the eyes exhibit is a solar powered mechanical clock that uses reflection of light to reveal the time lit below. It also looks like the heart of crime relay as it is literally the embodiment of the concept of humanizing criminals and when people are in prison, it's also called doing time. Now we are entering Act 3, the dehumanizing process. The dehumanizing process is meant to strip away all sense of self-identification and see if you will act like a criminal under certain circumstances. The journey begins as you step foot onto the cufflinks. Now you have to decide whether to take the left door or the right. Perfect. You need to get changed into your uniform, place your belongings into the lockers and pick your weapon of choice. Take a seat while Denver here briefs you on your mission. Now get your VR headsets on and rob the bank. After securing the bag, walk on the edge of a 50-storey building and zip line down to make your escape. And just when you think you got away with it, take off your glasses and boom, you're arrested and thrown into prison. 
Work together with your team to escape prison in the most efficient way possible. After breaking down the visitor's moral compass, we reintroduce an ex-convict by performing pickpocket magic shows which automatically draws out admiration and respect from the audience. The stage would then transform into a screen which plays back the highlight reel from the yard as an educational experience for visitors to always be mindful of their belongings. The design of Cirque du Crime is taken from the act of sucking air out of a plastic bag representing a sense of desperation of these criminals to survive, but just like the light peeping through a small hole, there is always hope. And here's another easter egg for you. The backdrop is actually a casino, a hidden part of the black market. And here's another bonus one. After all shops and programs are over, at 11pm, go to the bathroom, walk through the mirror and discover a speakeasy bar and club. These easter eggs are deliberately hidden so when people miss it on their first visit and see other people posting about it on social media, it will actually draw them back to visit the space again. And that's on marketing. So you've reached the end of this video, but you're still waiting for me to explain where the sources of exotic food and criminal-owned products are from. You see, an underground society is fully functioning behind a solid concrete wall known as the Bounty Society. We discovered that approximately 115 million confiscated products from the police, airports, or even counterfeit goods contribute to a huge waste problem. The purpose of this society is to repurpose the seized items and sell them in the black market. In order to discreetly transfer products from one building to the other, the capsule form of the eyes are deployed and sent directly into the storage area of the other building. Crime really may be controversial to many for taking advantage of criminal activities. However, Supply and demand is key. Nobody has deliberately designed a space to celebrate crime even though the appetite for it is there. I believe Crime Relief proposes a new way of rehabilitation that is more effective in the long run, which on top of that benefits the economy of the country as well. And for that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the Sin City.